हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल इजी प्रोग्रामिंग आई एम नवीन मिश्रा एंड आई कंटिन्यू टीचिंग यू हाउ टू राइट प्रोग्राम्स इन जावा लैंग्वेज इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल आई हैव डिस्कस्ड द थ्योरेटिकल पार्ट ऑफ जावा इन विच आई एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन द फीचर्स ऑफ जावा द डिफरेंस बिटवीन जावा एंड सी एंड सी प्लस प्लस एंड ऑल्सो रिटर्न अ सैम्पल प्रोग्राम ऑफ जावा लैंग्वेज इन दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल वी विल कंटिन्यू विद सम बेसिक स्टफ ऑफ प्रोग्रामिंग लाइक टोकन्स डाटा टाइप्स एंड प्रोग्राम्स द गाइज हु हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड सी एंड सी प्लस प्लस लैंग्वेज मस्ट न्यू दिस टॉपिक्स इजिली देर विल बी जस्ट स्मॉल चेंजेस एज इन जावा प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज एज कंपेयर टू सी एंड सी प्लस प्लस सो वी जस्ट हैव अ क्विक गो थ्रू अबाउट ऑल दिस बेसिक स्टफ बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल आई विल suggest you guys to please subscribe and share to my channel share it with your friends and family okay so that you don't you do not miss any video tutorial of mine okay so let's start with today's tutorial tokens data types and programs before starting the before starting to write the java program we must know some basic rules of java programming language okay so let's start with these rules If you are writing the program in Java language, you must have a class defined in it. Without class, you cannot create a Java program. And inside that class, you must have a main function. Okay, so even the main function must be in class. Without main functions, your program will not work. Except you are writing the GUI programs. So if you are writing the GUI programs for like applets, then they do not need any main function. But otherwise most of the time you will need a main function okay so you must write a main function in c and c++ language we have discussed this that every line must end with a semicolon just like in english we end every sentence with full stop in java programming every sentence statement must end with a semicolon okay now these are some new rules in java library there are inbuilt classes variables and methods to differentiate between a variable and a class or a method and a class there are some certain rules that are followed by java or java programming library the first rule is all the inbuilt classes will have initial letter capital so if the string system and math are the inbuilt classes then you have to know that their initial letter is capital so string system and math whenever you write in your program must be in upper case must be initial letter capital okay and follow this rule for all the classes like said runnable and so on okay now if the if if there are inbuilt methods in java in java all the inbuilt methods have initial letter capital initial letter small if your method name is of one letter for example main main is will be written in lower case get show so these names will be in lower case but if your function is function name is comprised of two or more uh, words for example get data now get will be in lower case but data d will be in upper case all the inbuilt methods like next int get data will have first letter first words letter in small and second word letter in in upper case okay initial letter equal equal signore case i will be in capital and c will be in capital compared to c will be in lower case and t will be in upper case okay so inbuilt methods have initial letter capital for the second or third word okay now all the inbuilt variables like value of pi okay will be in upper case pi will be written in upper case so pi color dot black black is a inbuilt variable so that will be in upper case max underscore priority min underscore priority that will be in upper case okay so the inbuilt variables will be in upper case now these rules you guys should have known you must know in c and c++ programming that will be followed by java that is no semicolon before the start of curly braces okay then you must save your program with the same name as of class name so that when you compile your program the same name is followed so the class name the file name is same that will be used in java c to compile we say write java c here java c is the compiler followed by file name dot java to run a program we say java then file name okay 
now this is the sample program uh, i in the previous video i have explained this program maybe i have not explained this program i have just written this program and also shown you the output of the program let's try to understand each and every word written in this program so first of all is the comment this first program followed by two backslashes so the comments are only used for the documentation purpose okay followed by the class name now the class name class keyword is in lower case and test t is in t is capital you can write a lower case class name here like test can be in lower case but i am following the java programming rule that's why all the class name will be in upper case now the class starts from here like these curly braces okay so this block this whole block belongs to this class and inside this class i have written a main function the main function is very different as compared to the main function in c and c++ in c and c++ you guys just only write void main or simply main but here you have to write the main function in this way okay public static void main so let's try to understand what this public static void main represents public is the ss specifier you guys have studied it the private public and protected ss specifier in c++ in java there is a force ss specifier which is default ss we sometimes call it friendly access okay static now static is the keyword used to call the main function without creating the object of the test class so static is the keyword to create on the uh, to call the function directly void is the return type main is the function name and inside these round brackets there's a class name string whose array of objects as created string since it is a class name so s is capital args represents arguments array of arguments that is array of strings is created here okay then sop just like in c language we use printf in c++ we used c out in java we use system.out.println here system is the class name out is the object name println is the function name and anything you write in the double quotes will be printed in your output screen as it is so once you run your program this output hello world will be printed here okay so this is the sample program now let's continue some other basic things like tokens variables keywords identifiers you guys must have studied it in c++ language you can continue this here uh, there will be only little difference very small differences but we uh, as compared to tokens in c and c++ in java okay so we'll just have a quick go through with these tokens so what are tokens when you write a statement in java program the statement is broken down into small parts and each part is called a token okay tokens are separated by the white spaces for example you have written this line int a equals to 10 semicolon now here you are declaring a variable a and assigning it the value 10 each and every sentence you written here have a specific name just like have a specific term just like in english language you write uh, just like in english language a sentence is comprised of noun pronoun verb adjective here a token a statement in java have small parts like variables keywords identifiers operators constant and so on so these are the small building blocks of a statement of a statement in java program okay so let's study further about these so generally tokens can be categorized into six types variables keywords data types constants operators and delimiters let's have a quick go through about every token so keywords whenever you write these words compiler will have a predefined meaning for these words okay this meaning cannot be changed by the programmer for example int char float double all these key keywords the keywords must be written in lower case all the variable name function name or class name that will be given by you will be called the identifier okay and once you declare the identifier then uh, you can also declare a variable to declare a variable to use a variable we will we will use the variable in two steps first of all we will declare the variable and in step 2 we will initialize the variable with some value okay so int a is the declaration a equals to 10 is the initialization you can also read the value of a from the user 
using scanner class object okay we will do it in the next video now constants variables are the variables value keeps changing throughout the program as their name suggest and these are the names given to the memory location whereas constants are the values given to these variables which are fixed and cannot be changed there are four types of constant integer constant float constant character constant and string constant integer constants deal with number deals with number without fraction part so 10 20 40 400 float constant deals with number with fraction part character constant anything can be written inside the single quote will be considered as a character string constant must be written in double quotes anything written inside the double quotes will be treated as strings now when you declare a variable you say int a now here int represent the data type using the use of data type is done to satisfy the two main things number one what will be the memory size of the variable and what kind of data what kind of what type of data the variable can hold okay so these two terms or these two conditions are fulfilled by declaring a variable with its data type okay now data types in java data types in java can be categorized into two type primitive and non primitive primitive are also called basic data types that is available in java that is already defined in java library non primitive data types are defined by the user according to their requirement now primitive data type is further divided into two types numeric and non numeric so numeric data type deal will deal with number and non numeric data type will not deal with number they will deal with characters or boolean now numeric can further be divided into integer and float so integer data type will not have fraction part and int short pipe long is the integer data type float float data type have two types float and double the only difference between float and double is in of the size nothing more, more than that non numeric data types are boolean and character now this boolean is a new data type that you have that you guys must have known who the guys which are studying the java after c and c++ they that boolean data type will be new data type for you, for the for those guys okay so boolean and character data types are there now non primitive data types are array strings classes and interfaces pointers does not exist in java structure and union does not exist in java that's why they are not the part of the user defined data types okay now every data type takes some memory size in java int takes 4 byte short takes 2 byte byte take 1 byte long take 8 byte float take 4 byte double take 8 byte boolean take 1 bit in which you can store either true or false character take 2 bytes and then other data types okay we will cover the uh, we will cover the memory size of the data types in the next video tutorial okay now let's uh, understand the program to add two numbers then i will write this programs for you guys uh, in this video tutorial so uh, so this is the program i have written the class name is sum followed by the main function line, lines and then i have declared the variables like abc in abc so this is the variable declaration then I have stored the values 10 and 20 inside a and b and this is called initialization and then have I have applied the formula c is equals to a plus b so the these values 10 and 20 are added and the answer is stored in c variable okay to now these values a b c will be printed using this system dot out dot print ln line okay the new thing that you guys that c and c plus plus students must have seen here is this plus operator okay in in c language along with printf we used comma and followed by the variable name in c++ we use c out followed by two greater less than operators in java we will follow this plus operator so to print the variable value alongside your message we use the plus operator which act as a concatenation operator okay and when you run the program this will be your output okay i will write the program for you guys so that I, so that you guys can see how the programs can be compiled and executed uh in this video i will uh write the program in sublime and will continue writing the programs in sublime so i will suggest you guys to download the software this is a free of cost software okay so let's start with the new program so this is the new file uh 
I'll first of all write the heading of the program. Program to find the simple interest or we'll make it easier find the average of three numbers so class name is average followed by the curly braces then i'll write public static void main string args if you have not saved your program till now you, the sublime will show you the text in white and if you save your program I will save the program in here so I'll see as the same name as of class name so just a second average dot job as you guys can see the color have been changed now inside the main function you can start the color braces start declaring the variables so to find the average I need three variables a b c and the answer will be stored in avg variable so these are the variables once i do this a b c avg memory will be allotted in the ram now i will put the data in the variables like a equals to 10 b equals to 20 c equals to 30 or 40 whatever value you can write then i will apply the formula so the average equals to a plus b plus c divided by 3 okay and then we can print the messages so system dot out dot println value of a equals to plus a then i will copy these lines and will change the message value of b equals to b value of c equals to c and average of three numbers equals to plus avg okay and i think my program is done let's save this file and run this file so to open the folder location you can what you can is what you guys can do is right click here open containing folder option and the folder will be shown to you and this is your program now without selecting any file press shift then right click choose the option PowerShell window here and you can compile your program like Java C, Java C for compiler average dot Java if your program is compiled successfully a class file will be created now you can see your output so Java average so there you go you have all these values now there is a possibility that when you divide the numbers your answer may produce some fraction part data so you guys can convert your in data type to float okay let's see if there is any error or the program works fine or not it works fine and you see the float variable is picked and the values are stored so uh, float variable is used for fraction part data before when i was using integer i the answer was only 23 but now the answer is like this 23.333334 okay so i hope you guys have understood the program and you guys can write some programs by yourself so these are the list of programs you guys should do it by yourself i have done the first program for you guys the rest of the programs you guys can do it by yourself and if anyone finds any difficulty or any error they can comment their code in the video tutorial below or they can contact me okay so that's it from this video in the next video i will cover reading the input from the user some more about data types followed by the operators and type casting so that's it from this this video thank you very much for watching my video see you in the next video cheers